Saturday. Saturday, August 5th, 2017. 153, slowly, ever so slowly, pulls up to CNG Junction and calls Hain Tower. Hain Tower, 153. I'm calling for the dispatch on this end. It's 332. It's, it's all the same now, all the way down, way down the road, dude. When you're in Greenville, you're actually talking about the old, what we call the North End Dispatcher. 332. I appreciate it. Back of that little sign there between the two poles is CNG Junction that leads south out of Greenville to what's called the V line. Just serves industries south of Greenville. Basically, read not a through street. It ends down south of Greenville, where of course the number one and number two tracks, the two tracks on the far right, are the Norfolk Southern Main Line. You can see that right in front of the signals, there's a sign that says South Greenville. So South Greenville and CNG Junction are like right there next to each other. Charles, Patrick, yeah, this is uh, 153 ready to go. Ready to go. All right, looks like you're going to follow 213 away from Crawlville. All right, behind 213 and Crawlville. Thank you. I'm Charles, Patrick, over. The track out of Greenville does go to... 153 leaving the yard here with Hind Wide. Talk to him before you go by, please. Over. The track out of Greenville does uh, go to single track at Crosswell. That's just uh, to the southwest of Greenville. South Railroad South, real direction closer west. Now, t today I was saying it's August 5th, 2017. This bridge was built in 1918. Queen Street Bridge. I believe it's Queen Street. So, with him having to slow down and stop again when he gets to Crosswell, they may well not be in a very big hurry even to pull out here. There are four or five engines on the front of this train, and the very last engine on the front of this train is almost certainly dead in tow. It's a GP9 painted in primer gray. Lettering still showing through of the primer gray a little bit for Vulcan Materials Company. Windows painted over in that same primer gray. So maybe Vulcan is using it as a slug. Just a uh, unit for power that doesn't have a set of its own independent controls in it. We're three minutes into the video and this train hasn't moved, so I'll probably go ahead and cut out any more dead air here, make a little edit in the video if, it's, if they don't get on the move on in the next few seconds. I liked having that first few minutes to be able to give the setting and tell you about what, I, what to look for on this train. I don't know what the high and wide load is. I was wondering if if that locomotive dead in tow is somehow being classified as high and wide because it's not a regular, you know, dimensions of a regular rail car, or if there's actually something special uh, further back on this load. I'm going to go ahead and stop and restart connect the two videos together. It's still August 5th, 5.37 p.m. now. And 153 is finally pulling out. For a little bit there, I thought they were going to wait for 213 to run by them because 213 is going to have priority over them at Crosswell. Where the track going out of Greenville goes down to a single track. But if they just ease forward slow, it ain't gonna be 15 minutes for 213 to get on out of town so we'll see 153 going by and depending on how quick 213 changes crews 
and how slow 153 goes, I may get to see uh, 213 go by on track one. So you see one, two, three engines for power, and then you got that Jeep dead in tow. Approaching the signal at South Greenville. this looks like at this angle the Sun's decided to go back behind the clouds and that's just the way it goes S44 AC Dash 940C SD70M and an AC44 C6M That Vulcan Materials uh, Jeep was uh, Identified as either being a GP7 or GP9 by uh, Tom Watkins. All right, now we got uh, 213 coming up on track I'll one. Come back to a knockdown signal. Five. 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 It looked like we're going to get too good a view from it, of it from here, and I wasn't expecting anything too spectacular on it anyway. We see we got engine. Uh, 9804-9 and 9361, another dash nine. Two dash nines on 213 today. Oh. Well, so much for my videoing skills. I managed to call out what the power was though. Well, maybe a better shot of it there. There's our dash nines. I wasn't watching at the head, but looking back there myself, I don't see anything that jumps out to me as being a high and wide load. Covered hopper cars, you can tell a lot of times what type of covered hopper cars by how many compartments there are, or seeing the uh, outlets on the bottom, or seeing the caps on the roof. A lot of these ones with 10 caps along the roof like that, those are 20 inch diameter caps, Tend to, a lot of those tend to be in the plastics industry. Whereas covered hopper cars that only have three compartments and have those long roof hatches that run the whole length of the car, they're like re rectangular. Uh, caps that, like I said, run the whole length of the car. Those tend to be used for loading grains. And they have a different unload mechanism than the one on the bottom you see of these uh, plastics industry type cars. WLPX is a perfect example. That's Westlake Polymers. That's what the WLP stands for in WLPX. Now here's a different type of uh, this GPFX. It's got one, two, three, four, five 
hoppers and there's pipes connecting them. I think those pipes are to pressurize them uh, for powdered substances. Uh, I think concrete would probably be too heavy. I think they tend to travel in little uh, two compartment cars just because of the weight per axle. So I'm thinking more like flour or something like that. I'm not sure what moves in those five compartment cars. Sounds like something off-gassing in one of those tank cars, don't it? <laughs> Carbon dioxide, refrigerated liquid. So it may be that as it heats up, it vents a certain amount of carbon dioxide. Not sure. Hmm. Or maybe it's not supposed to leak, but it just happens to be a leaky car. Uh, three compartment with a long rectangular cap. So those are grain cars, like I was talking about. For two for one five three oh. Looks like we got a cut of coal cars on here. Yeah, let's go ahead up. Let me see, uh, give me just a second to uh, get back in there with you. Two thirteens picking up speed since it's going to have the right of way up there at the single track. One fifty three is probably going to keep taking it easy for a little while, but then once two thirteen gets past, them, they can start picking up speed. There's some kind of a label on the sides of these coal cars. Something about do not load. Green label. Let's see if I can get it to clear up. Well, that's not on the the ones I'm on now. There's one more coming though. There. Not going to clear up in time to tell what it uh, says. What did you say was not showing on it Well, here's some uh, scrap metal mill gondolas. Or mill gondolas. Oh, okay. I um, My pronunciation uh, right may be a little off. The, uh, looks like about past the 486 where you see the yellow and the red. That, uh, Looks like where it's actually going to go active and show the XOMX. Uh, that's a uh, Exxon uh, uh, petrochemicals uh, plastics uh, car. CHVX. It's a Chevron plastics car. Em uh, open caps on that Chevron yeah, uh, car. That's not a good thing. Up there at that, uh, 486? Conrail uh, numbered on that. Uh, those, yeah, those are called steel that, coil they cars. Is, they have uh, lids. Red, like they have lids to cover their coils of steel to protect them from the weather. So those the things that look okay, like they yeah, would hook onto the two on the top. Yeah, so that's exactly yeah, what they're uh, for. Hook onto to it, remove uh, the lids. Put you restrict you when you get up there and hit that yellow. More plastics industries cars and again some more with some empty caps right uh, so that's actually where it goes uh, open active. caps I mean uh, on the bottoms where they unload uh, them so you just came through the yard so it's actually at that first signal where it goes uh, active at okay yeah that was learning for both of us because yeah. uh, I really didn't know the exact line post it went active but now we do all right now ACFX there that's actually numbered not for the owner, but the, well, it's for the owner, but it's, that's the owner is leasing the car out. American Car Foundry built the cars and they have a car leasing group. In fact, ACF doesn't build rail cars anymore, but I think that the ACF lease cars uh, fleet is still a thing. That's why you still see so many of them uh, numbered like that. They, they got out of the part of the business where they actually had labor that they, a lot of labor that they had to pay for. In the uh, constructing of cars and are more just a leasing company now. Although their designs are still built, their designs are built by ARI now. So uh, on a, you'll see in newer cars that look a lot like the ACF rail cars, and if you look, a lot of them will have an ARI logo on them somewhere, uh, even if they're numbered for like WLPX, say, 
uh, maybe along that sill beam there's a, maybe a little logo which the ARI logo actually looks a lot like the ACFX logo the old ACF uh, American Car Foundry logo so those American Car, car Foundry cars were built in uh, Huntington West Virginia which is where I went to high school so uh, them going out of business uh, one more thing that hurt Huntington uh, whereas covered hopper cars numbered TLCX, very similar thing. They were um, yes, I'm trying, you guys. cars that were built by Pullman, Pullman yeah, okay, Leasing I'll Company. Still owns them. And those were formerly built in uh, Butler, Pennsylvania, where my mom grew up. So her hometown was uh, hurt by them closing over the years. They closed a good number of years before ACF. Lots of scrap metal there. That's what you tend to see mill gondolas used for a lot is uh, scrap metal. Um, that looks good. Also railroad ties, min mill gondolas. I always want to say gondolas, but gondolas is the thing in Italy that the guy with the, you know, sings to the couple as he's oaring them through the, through the uh, waterways of Venice. So gondolas is really actually more the at least rail fans pronunciation I think <laughs> if not railroaders in general and just general usage of gondolas uh, for rail cars that like that they're open top like that I do wonder what other commodities might go in, in the same types of cars as uh, plastics type cars. Because I always say, is, is it really that these are all plastics? But that OCPX, I think that's a plastic company. So UTCX, that's, uh, that's Union Tank Car. So that's another leasing company situation. FPAX, that might be foremost of plastics. So that's again, a plastics company. So it would, would make sense that those would actually be uh, plastics cars. Now that, uh, box, there was a box car that just went by that had caps on the roof. Uh, and they're vented caps. Those are just like on the uh, plastics cars, you'll notice like one out of every three caps sets much wider than the opening. I'll zoom in on them a little bit so you can see them. And those caps uh, are plastic and they have vents built into them so the air can come in from underneath the cap so you don't get contam contamination when the, it rains in the car or anything. But while they're sucking material out of the bottom, air can come through that vent and get into the car so you don't end up crushing the uh, sides of the car in from negative pressure. If you're unloading it with a vacuum system. More scrap metal. My battery may end up not holding up on me. It's uh, about a 15 minute video right now and I got a blinking red light. And I don't think I had the presence of mind to throw a spare battery in my pocket before I left. So if it stops, that's probably gonna be it. But I'm also figuring we're pretty near the end of this train too. And I've certainly talked enough for this video. Let's see, uh, the current lettering on this box car is 
AGR, but VS R VSP Railroad, or no VS something Railroad. I don't know. Is the original lettering on that box car? It's interesting looking. I have to look that one up when I get home if I think of it. All right, some more released tank cars from Union Tank Car. These ones are chemical tank cars, I would think. You know, it's acrylic acid. It says on that car. So a lot of times you'll see single-purpose tank cars, and they'll go ahead and put right on the car what is carried in that car, typically. Now, that still doesn't tell you whether you're empty or loaded just by looking at it. Uh, maybe the placard probably does. I'm guessing the little, when they get empty, they, they may turn the page on that placard. Sodium hydroxide solution right on those Union Tank cars. Another Exxon uh, plastics car. Dow Chemicals plastics car. Uh, very tall uh, gondola cars are often called wood chip hoppers because that tends to be what they carry. The ones that have that uh, goose logo on the side temp were formerly uh, Great Lake something or other. <laughs> I don't have it in my head right now. That's an interesting combination. Those cars have both rectangular lids and round lids. There were a couple of covered copper cars there that had a dual lids. That's the nice thing about these high angle views. You see these things on the top of the rail cars that you know, I don't catch most of the time when I'm looking at trains because usually I'm looking from them at ground, looking at them from ground level. There's our high and wide. No. Is that a high and wide load on the end of the train? That car looks really weird. It might be a wide car. I'm hoping the video holds out. We got a green box car. Marnette Tomahawk and Western Railroad Company. Also currently numbered AGR box car. What is the deal with that gondola car? I'm almost afraid to zoom in because of my low battery that I'll kill it and not get as good a view of it if I just let it play. So I think I'm just going to let it play and we'll see what it looks like as we look as it goes by. It may not be that I can pick out anything that I see on this train that's a high and wide low, but there's something that technically was. That just looks like a very old gondola car just traveling on the end there. It. It looks like it's just a southern logo. 